Hello friends, it's Kat from Meow Meow Kapow. Last week, in the video where I did a whole bunch of material tests to see if they'd be a good combo for the eventual cover design of my now published and still secret book, I mentioned that my sister had gone to Japan and managed to acquire the Miyazaki palette that is only available at the Ghibli Museum. Like many of you, I'm super eager to find out just what the heck is included in the package. And while I don't have enough time right now to do as thorough of a test as you may be used to getting from me, I at least wanted to open it up on camera with you and find out what's inside. I love the cute little drawstring cloth bag that it comes in since I'm a sucker for that sort of packaging. And the price tag is slightly out of date, by the way, because it ended up selling for 79,000 yen, which is roughly $80 US. Inside the bag is a Sumi brush, which I'd say reminds me of roughly a size 7 round brush, basically a decent mid-sized round brush. There's also a pencil included in 2B, which is a softer lead than I usually like for sketching with since I tend to smudge soft leads, but it can definitely be used to make nice, dark, defined marks. Given that this set is largely paint and pencil, having a softer lead does give you more versatility with just the provided tools. I've never tried the Mitsubishi Uni line of pencils before, but I assume it does its job. As a person who believes all pencil sharpeners disappear the moment you go to look for them, I totally appreciate that there's one included. It's a fairly hefty Stedler sharpener made of metal and with only one hole. Metal sharpeners tend to be both more durable and more reliable. A lot of plastic sharpeners I've tried break leads or break themselves often, whereas metal ones are usually just a wee bit better. There's a super cute brochure included that I'm betting tells you a bit about the materials in this set as well as some tips on what to do and what not to do. Sadly, it's entirely written in Japanese and I'm unable to translate it. However, I completely love all the doodles, including one of Hamaji the Boiler Man from Spirited Away hiding next to the illustration of the palette. And there's beautiful scenery on the back, which I'm a bit envious of since getting better at backgrounds, buildings especially, is one of those things I keep telling myself I want to do. Someday. Someday. I tried to get shots of the entire brochure for those of you who are curious about it, but it was a bit difficult to do so without constantly catching a glare. The finish on the paper is a semi-gloss or sort of satin, and it was a bit difficult to keep visible with my setup. I hope you can forgive this, but also, how darn cool is this thing? Seriously, loving it. Next up is the plastic palette itself, which even though it's likely an inexpensive one, feels quite nice. I've gotten a few like this style before, but this one has a decently thick and sturdy plastic. I prefer a more compact setup, but this palette with the finger hole and little brush holding holes does actually feel pretty nice in your hand. The big draw of this set is the paint itself, though, and if you've ever used Holbein watercolors before, regardless of whether or not you prefer them, it's hard to deny that they are of excellent quality. I've bought a 24 color set of Holbein watercolors before and did double check to see that these are different. They are. This is not the same 24 color set that is normally available. I've linked the set that I already had down in the doobly-doo, but this collection appears to be exclusive to the Ghibli Museum, which makes it pretty swanky. I'd also like to remind you that this entire kit was $80, and the paints alone cost more than that here in the US. So value for money? If you know someone going to Japan anyway, it's totally worth it. Something I should mention though is that there's a bit of poor planning here. The plastic palette included only has 18 wells, and this is a 24 color set. Um, pretty sure that's not enough room? Unless I want to just let multiple colors share spaces, which I don't. So this plastic palette likely won't get any use from me, despite actually feeling rather nice. Lastly, there's a sketchbook. The paper inside does look and feel like cold pressed watercolor paper, though it is a smidge thin. I'll be interested to see how it holds up against liquid. Let me know if you want to see that in a test. I also love the cute little ribbon tie on the edge to keep it closed, and the fact that it's a hardcover is a nice touch to me since I'm fairly rough on my travel books. This gives it a better chance. So that's everything that comes inside of the Ghibli Museum exclusive watercolor set. I honestly only expected the little pamphlet and the watercolors themselves, so I was quite surprised at the other goodies. To me, they're really just a bonus. I have a couple of friends who exclusively use Sumi brushes when inking and painting, and while I do have some really inexpensive ones I got years ago, I haven't given them much play. Being surprise reunited with this tool seems like a great time to experiment! What do you think? Is this something you'd want to snag for yourself? Do you think it was worth it? Let me know! 
Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and someone who loves you enough to arrange getting expensive art supplies while abroad. Bye! <laughs>